All right, recording going. We're picking up uh, back from Friday. So let's see if we can finish uh, unit two possibly today. Here's block equilibrium on an incline. No, equilibrium means the forces zero out. Right. Hey, I see three forces. I see a green weight, I see a blue normal force, and I see a red friction force. Right? Now, whenever you see this, uh, what I always tell you guys to do is uh, break um, or introduce a Cartesian system that runs parallel perpendicular to the surface. In this case, uh, the blue and the red are already aligned to that system, but the green one, I'm gonna break into components. You guys see mg sine theta matches the friction force and mg cosine theta matches the normal force, right? That's true for equilibrium. Now, equilibrium might mean one of two different things. The block might be at rest or might be sliding at constant velocity. If all you have is the free body diagram, you don't know which one of those it is, right? Uh, because both those are zero net force, therefore zero acceleration, equilibrium. Right? Hey, what is the normal force uh, compared to the weight for different incline angles? As you ramp up that angle, right? Well, if it's a flat surface, the normal force matches the weight in terms of magnitude. As you ramp up the angle, uh, mg cosine theta, right? focus on that. Uh, Hey, what if, you, what if we get rid of friction? Let's have an air hockey table. You guys see that gray air hockey puck? So if you lift the table, uh, now that block is gonna accelerate. What rate does it accelerate? I, I only see two forces. Notice there's no friction, right? Two forces, uh, weight, normal force, uh, these, this component cancels with that. Right? Uh, so mg sine theta is the net force. Plug that into Newton's second law, boom. The rate accelerates is g sine theta. Uh, one of the first labs you guys had, you guys remember the Hot Wheels cars? Uh, rolling down the inclines, right? Now, we weren't quite at this part of the class yet, so you couldn't quite do exactly this, but in retrospect, you say, oh yeah, if that would have been the rate those cars were accelerating down the incline, G sine theta, because you have like a um, um, 10 degree angle, right? right. Uh, now let's put friction back in. By the way, if I scroll back a few, uh, you guys see that picture up there? Bam, bam, Whoa. that's a match. This lab I had you guys do, um, this would be a, a fair FRQ question. AP could ask you guys this. They say, if it's sliding at constant velocity, what is the coefficient of friction between that block and that surface, right? So uh, notice it's sliding down, right? So that velocity vector is just for context, right? Uh, you wouldn't draw that yourself. They ask you guys to draw the free body diagram, but don't draw the feet. Right? So I see three uh, force vectors, right? Uh, so it's a little bit of a process, but at the end of the day, um, the coefficient of friction ends up being, this is the answer, tangent of the angle. Notice the mass of the block cancels out. You guys saw those too when you guys did this lab, right? A little bit of a complicated process. Uh, you should be able to do that for AP. They might ask that as an FRQ, or I think that would be fair. Uh, something hanging in an equilibrium. So two forces, the weight down and the spring force up. Right? The weight down is mg, the spring force up is kx. You guys remember Hooke's law, f equals kx? Right? In this case, it's going to zero out because opposite direction. Okay. Uh, side thought, uh, what if you had um, this object right here? Uh, you, you just barely hooked it to the spring, so the spring is not quite stretched yet, and then you let it go and it overshoots this equilibrium point. The equilibrium point is like this X right here, right? right? And it goes to some maximum stretch distance, right? Uh, if you were asked, what is the maximum stretch distance? You would not use force equilibrium. You would use what method? Conservation of energy. Ah, you say it goes from gravitational potential to spring potential, ah, right? And it turns out if you run the math that the, the maximum stretch point is exactly twice this x for the equilibrium point. Th this x is the equilibrium point. Suppose this equilibrium is like seven centimeters. I can tell you the max stretch would be like 14 centimeters. It'd be twice much, right? Uh, th that's a little bit to the energy section, which I have got to. The chain gang. Uh, you guys remember this? Uh, you, this is one of your many labs. Uh, the top spring scale has, holds all the weight beneath it. But as you go down, it only holds weight um, beneath that. So the um, green scale down here is not nearly as much, right? Uh, there is a... Um, uh, alternate version of this. You could turn this horizontal, make this like a like a train. Ooh, I guess the train game. Okay. The front engine has to pull all the uh, cars behind it, but by the time you get to like the uh, penultimate car, that only is hooked to the caboose, so it didn't uh, have to pull as much. That's if it's accelerating, right? I mean, once it's going constant speed, now there's no tension right, for, for the train, right? But if it's accelerating, ooh. hey, press joint in tension. Oh, ooh, this sure does remind me of that lantern problem we were looking at, right? So the uh, guiding principle is that the sum of forces is zero newtons in each direction, like along each axis. So introduce a Cartesian system. This one pulls left as much as this one pulls right. That's what the blue one says. Okay? And then if you add the upper components, um, that has to balance out the weight. That's what the green one says. Boom, boom. Just like that. Okay. Here's a little bit more complicated version of this. What if you have different angles? So it's not nice symmetry going on. Well, it's the same guiding principles. And then you know, there's a little bit more trigonometry with um, alpha and beta. Let's see some cosines, some sines going on. 
Uh, okay, lab version. Ah, elevator physics. So if you're in an elevator, uh, if the elevator is accelerating up or down, you, you feel kind of weird, right? You might feel a little bit light, a little bit heavy, right? Now, whether you're interested in your weight standing on the scale, or that would be a maybe apparent weight down the scale. It's called the normal force from the scale. Or if you're interested in what's the tension in the elevator cable, it's the exact same math on this one I did in terms of the tension in the elevator cable, right? It ends up being um, the tension in the cable is m times g plus or minus a, depending on which way it's accelerating, right? Now, I didn't derive that on this poster, but you guys could derive it from uh, any one of these free body diagrams combined with Newton's second law of motion. You could solve for that, right? Okay. Uh, guys, uh, the elevator in equilibrium, does it have to be at rest to be in equilibrium? No, it could be moving at constant speed, up or down, and you wouldn't know if you were staying inside, because that'd be physically equivalent to just at rest, right? Ah, right. Ah, right. Uh, ooh, Atwood physics. So the way, th th there's two main approaches to solve for um, usually two questions. The main question is usually what's the acceleration, like the downward acceleration of the large block. Right? The other, the follow-up question is usually what's the tension in the connecting string, right? And there's two main approaches. The approach that I usually do with the guys is the system's point of view. So that's Newton's second law as it applies to like the entire system. So I've got the difference in weights divided by the sum of masses. Right? You know, that's considering the external forces. You can solve for the acceleration boom just like that. And then if you were asked what's the tension, I would say, well, take that acceleration and plug it into one of these green boxes down here. Uh, this is a free body diagram for either one of those masses, right? Uh, I would say do that. Okay. Now, if you guys go to college and take physics, it might be that your textbook and or the instructor tells you to do the opposite method, which is to start with these two green boxes, do a system of equations, and then you kind of simultaneously get the acceleration and the tension. So a little bit different ways to approach that. Just make sure you can do it more, uh, at least one of those ways, right? Ah, here's a modified Atwood. We've got little wheels here. Just want to get rid of friction. You guys did this lab too. A little bit different setup, a little bit different result. Okay, Atwoods. Right. Ooh, how about a car going around a curve? Now, if he's moving forward, making a left-hand turn, there has to be a net force to the left. This is kind of the setup for the next section. Could something to do with centripetal force, right? In this case, the friction force is acting as a centripetal force, right? And, ah, right. Um, how about a classic pendulum free body diagram? So uh, here's the pendulum swinging back and forth. And I know it's swinging back and forth. Well, I've labeled a couple of velocities right there. Might be swinging left or right. Because the tension is greater than the weight. Guys, if it was at rest, would the tension match the weight? If it was a rest? Yeah, if it was a rest, yeah, it, it would. Right? But um, the fact that, ooh, I, I see uh, those forces are not balanced. I can say there's a net force. Hey, do you guys think the tension minus the weight is equal to the centripetal force. Ah, mv squared over r, something like that. Ah, right. Okay. So it has to be a uh, swing like that. Maybe you should throw a yellow banner on that rather than normal, because that's kind of the next section, which is um, some do the ah, centripetal type stuff, right? All right. Well, that's about as far as I've been uh, getting today. And yeah, just in time. This bell's about to ring. So that'll be our pause point today.